A quadratic equation has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, where a is not equal to zero. A quadratic equation has an x squared term in it. So here's the x squared term. So a can't be naught, because if a was naught, then this would be naught. We would have no x squared term. That means we would not have a quadratic equation. That's why a can't be naught. The letters a, b, and c are normally given to us. We normally know what they are. Um, letters from the start of the alphabet stand for given values usually. x is unknown. We're often looking for x. We're looking for the values of x that satisfy this equation. x is a letter from the end of the alphabet. Now the roots are, in other words, solutions are x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Suppose we want to solve this quadratic equation, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Well, we write down what a, b, and c are. a is the coefficient of x squared. a in this case is 1. b is the coefficient of x. b is minus 3. c is the constant term. c in this case is plus 2. So we fill those three numbers into our formula x equals minus b, so we have minus minus 3, that's plus 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, and this is all divided by 2 times 1. So this gives us 3 plus or minus the square root of something over 2. So I'm going to work out what's inside the square root sign. Minus 3 squared is plus 9. Plus 9 minus 4 times... If we multiply minus 4 by 1 by 2, we get minus 8. So we have plus 9 minus 8, that's 1. So we end up getting 3 plus 1 over 2, or 3 minus 1 over 2. The square root of 1 is 1. The plus or minus means we have two answers, two solutions to the quadratic equation. If we take the plus sign, we get 3 plus 1 over 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. If we take the minus sign, we have 3 minus 1, which is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So x equals 2, or x equals 1, are roots or solutions for the quadratic equation. Let's check x equals 1. So we plug 1 into this. So we get 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2. So we just replace x with 1, and if we work all of this out, we should get the right-hand side, which is 0. Um, so we have 1 minus 3 plus 2. Well, 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0, so that does check out. Let's check the other solution, x equals 2. So we plug 2 in for x, so we have 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2. So 2 squared is 4, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 plus 2. So we have 4 minus 6 is minus 2, minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So both solutions check out. These are the only two numbers that will satisfy this equation. As a matter of fact, for all quadratic equations, there are at most two different solutions. Um, that is because the power is 2. If the power was 3, we would have at most three different solutions. In that case, we, we would be talking about a cubic equation. So I'll cover cubic equations in later videos. Here is the graph of this quadratic expression. So I'm just calling it y. Now, quadratic expressions or functions have graphs that are like look like u-shapes. This shape is actually called a parabola. There are two ways this shape could appear. We could get an upright parabola like this, or we could get an inverted parabola. The way we can tell is by the coefficient of x squared. The coefficient of x squared here is plus 1. So a is equal to plus 1. It's positive. So that means we get an upright parabola. So we get an upright u-shape. If a was negative, we would get an inverted parabola. For example, if we look at the graph of y equals minus x squared, this is a quadratic function. Okay, there's no x term, there's no constant, but still it's quadratic because we it has an x squared term. Its graph is upside down. 
is an upside down parabola. It actually crosses the x-axis at just one point at, at the origin in this case. So the coefficient, when the coefficient of x squared is negative, we have an inverted parabola. So knowing that, we can draw a rough sketch. We know that it has to look like this because of the positive x squared term. However, we also know that the parabola crosses the x-axis at the two roots. So it crosses at 1 and it crosses at 2. You see, this point here is a point with coordinates 2, 0. Any point on the x-axis has a y-value of 0. And this point will satisfy this equation. If we plug 2 in for x, we'll get out 0 for y. That's just solving our quadratic equation. This point here has coordinates 1, 0. So, knowing the sine of the coefficient of x squared and knowing the two roots, we can draw a rough sketch of our quadratic function. Now, we could have also solved this equation by factorizing it. We could have got the factors of this quadratic expression. So, we have x here and x here because x times x gives us x squared. Then we get the factors of plus 2. Now, there are different factors of plus 2. It turns out that the correct ones for this equation are minus 2 times minus 1. Minus 2 times minus 1 gives plus 2. Now, how do we know that we get all of this? How do we know that we get this term here? Well, if we multiply like this, we can check for that middle term. Multiplying in the middle here, we get minus 2x. Multiplying these outer terms, we get minus 1x. Combining these terms, these results together, we get minus 3x, which is indeed the middle term. So that's how, how we know. That's a quick way to check that our factors are correct. So we don't have to do the entire multiplication. You know, x times x gives us x squared. Minus 2 by minus 1 gives us the plus 2 at the end. And to get the term in the middle, we multiply like I showed you. Now, if the product of two things is 0, that means either of them must be 0. The only way we can get 0 on the right-hand side is if either x minus 2 is 0 or x minus 1 is 0. If x minus 2 is 0, that means that x must equal 2. If x is 2, if we plug 2 in here, we get 2 minus 2, which is 0. And we'll have 0 times 2 minus 1. Well, that's just going to be 0. Similarly, if x minus 1 is 0, then all of this will be 0. This leads us to x equals 1. So in other words, if we plug 1 in here, we'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And we'll have 0 times this thing. This thing will actually be 1 minus 2. So we'll have 0 times minus 1, which will work out to be 0. So when you have 0 on the right-hand side, you just... Uh, put each factor equal to zero. So here are our two solutions. Now suppose we want to solve this equation here, minus 8x squared plus 8x plus 2 equals zero. As it stands, we could write down what a, b, and c are. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is minus 8. b is the coefficient of x, which is 8. c is the constant term, which is plus 2. We could plug these numbers into our equation and get out our two solutions. Nothing wrong with that. However, if you want to, you could have simplified this down. So I will just do some slight simplification. Well, what we could do is divide all of this equation by minus 2. Or we could divide by plus 2 and then change the signs. Okay, I'll divide by plus 2 first of all. So we get minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So these equations are identical. Then we could change all the signs. That, that means multiplying everything by minus 1. So multiply this by minus 1 to give plus 4x squared. Multiply this by minus 1 to give minus 4x. Multiply this by minus 1 to give minus 1. 0 times minus 1 is 0. So very often you will see quadratic equations with a positive x squared term. But it doesn't matter. These, these are identical. I could uh, apply the formula to any three of them and I'll get the same answers. What I will do is I will apply it to this version here. So I'll write down a, b and c. a, the coefficient of x squared is plus 4. b, the coefficient of x is minus 4. c, the constant term is minus 1. So I plug these numbers into this formula here. 
So x equals minus b, so it's minus minus 4, that's plus 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. b squared is minus 4, minus 4 squared is plus 16, minus 4 times a times c, minus 4 by plus 4 is minus 16, minus 16 by minus 1 is plus 16. All of this is divided by 2 times a, or 2 times 4, which is 8. The square root of 32 to 4 decimal places is 5.6569. So again, we have two solutions, depending on whether we take the positive or negative sign. So we have 4 plus 5.6569 divided by 8. That gives us one solution. I'll write this down to two decimal places, 1.21. And the other solution is got by taking the minus sign, 4 minus 5.6569. Divide that by 8. So to two decimal places, this is minus 0 0.21. Here is a graph of this function here, y equals 4x squared minus 4x minus 1. It'll cross the x-axis at the two solutions, at minus 0 0.21 and at plus 1.21. It's an upright parabola, up, upright u-shape, because the coefficient of x squared is positive. The coefficient of x squared is plus 4.